Well, this, uh, I suppose, used to be uh, AG3304's channel. But, uh, as you could see, I'm still messing about repairing old wrecks. In this case, it's an ITT2030 stereo music centre. It's about 40 years old. These came out in 74, 75, somewhere along there. And um, belongs to a friend of mine who got it from eBay. Uh, supposedly just about working. Well, the only trouble was that the uh, rather nice BSR deck it had was missing the counterweight on the end of the tone arm. And of course, it had to be a square section tone arm. So I couldn't spin one up on the lathe or whatever. That was out. I can't make square holes, oddly enough. <laughs> So, the only thing to do was to fit this alternative, which is actually a better deck anyway. It's a, a belt drive affair. Uh, believe it or not, they once used these in Amstrad Tower Systems many years ago, along with an ADC pickup, would you believe, a magnetic pickup. This old ITT, though, has a sonotone cartridge uh, found in both BSR and their arch-rival Garrard's products, of course. And it does sound rather nice, I have to say. To make this fit has taken some doing. Let me put it this way. And, uh, the tape deck, the mechanism in these early ITT ones, is very much like the old Philips ones was. And this one had done exactly what the old Philips ones do as well, and the belts in it had turned to goo, just turned to tar. And it is a pig to get out. The only thing I've found that will shift it from metal bits reliably is cellulose thinners. It's as bad as that. When you're recording on this, the level is set automatically, but uh, probably because of who made it, it'll be quite a nice uh, sounding thing. Notice there are no VU meters. You have, of course, as you might expect, got the superior AC bias recording system here. And to that degree, you've got the oscillator shift switch, which, if you ever did tape an AM station, might well get rid of some of the annoying whistle set up, as the frequency of the oscillator in the recording head on this would clash sometimes with the radio frequency resulting in a whistle and sometimes when you flick that it used to uh, eliminate that and as you see it's got the uh, three band radio medium long and fm and a stereo light uh, this is a bulb because this thing is far too old to have any leds on it it's actually very very basic when you think of it uh, Sometimes less is more, because it does sound rather nice. You've just got sliders for bass, treble, balance, volume here. And then, of course, your radio dial. Your light lights up when you're tuned into stereo. Tape end indicator. Um, you've also got uh, ferro or chrome tapes, which there, there is a pause control on it, done by moving that. And the cassette pops up like so. And uh, oh, it shows you how good quality this was because uh, the tape door hasn't done what many do and twist. Because where it latches on the other side there, the spring makes it twist on many models, doesn't it? And then along the front, well, if you've got your headphone socket and if you want to listen in private you must press that or it'll come out through the speakers tape gram it's marked now that gives its age away doesn't it i mean it would say phono nowadays wouldn't it or on later ones and then your three different radio bands off and on tuner there's your power on the lamp and a five pin socket for the uh, microphone and on the back you've got an external aerial input and plugs for four speakers so you can have two pairs of speakers going on this. Anyway, um, we'll see what this whole thing sounds like. It does sound rather nice as I go.
if I can only find the right spot, my epic old fart that I am. Well, behind this array of switches lay another horror story. This unit had been dropped and it had broken one of the circuit boards, rendering a number of the traces on it open circuit. So I've had to wire in shunts to get it all to work again. And it also bent part of the circuitry for the FM radio, so I've had to carefully reposition that so that it works. The sound comes from uh, plastic speakers, believe it or not. They're very heavy gauge plastic. But because uh, they're so nicely made and they're two way, complete with a base reflex port and a rubber surround woofer, they do sound, well, as you heard, rather nice as it goes. Whole thing looks to have been made in uh, ITT's. Foots Cray factory up in Ked. So uh, it's another part of uh, the audio visual history, really, of the country because uh, there aren't all that many uh, manufacturers left now. Certainly, none mainstream I could think of who uh, produce this sort of kit. We had an ITT factory down here in Hastings, where I am, and we also had a Philips factory as well, but long gone. Yeah. <laughs> Great shame to see it all disappear. Another thing I've got to do with this is make another base for it because uh, when it was dropped it cracked the original and it looks as if to me they thought about using the bottom of one of those old uh, stalk margarine containers if you're of a certain age you'll know what I mean stalk margarine <laughs> anyway I hope you like this uh, unusual survivor which is really just an expanded ITT tabletop stereogram with a tape built on it but uh, sometimes less is more and uh, it does have a rather pleasing sound and at least it's not a pig to work on <laughs> anyway hopefully see you soon